So I think we're going to introduce my next friend. I think, I think, right? Are we ready? Yeah, we got James Hill of Mr. Buck Nation. What's going on, James? How you doing? Hey, Bobby, how you doing, man? I've uh, loved your portion of the stream so far. Uh, you know, I will say this. Specifically, I like the prediction of Kadarius Tony being a star. Are that you a Gators fan? A, well, not necessarily a Gators fan, but I am a big Kadarius Tony fan. He was a guy who I thought the Bucks were going to be interested in a couple of years back whenever there was the trade rumors, you know, going around during the offseason that, you know, Maybe he would get traded from the Giants. I wanted the Bucks to be interested in them because I really do think that that guy does have a incredible amount of potential. So I do agree with you 100% on that, man. Yeah, injuries are really the only thing that's going to hold him back. Like, that, it really is. But when he's actually playing and involved, he just makes more plays than anybody else on the field. So I'm, I'm very excited for him. To, it's just you're just one play away from, like, Kadarius Tony's out for two weeks and then it turns. So that's that's the thing that worries you about Tony. Um How's, how are you guys treating Logan Ryan? Good. You know, one thing that I really did appreciate whenever Logan Ryan did sign with the Bucks was the leadership aspect of him, right? He was a team captain on the Giants for a little bit there. He was a very versatile defender too, right? He could play safety. He can play a little yeah. bit of cornerback. And, you know, all in all, yeah, I just think he's a solid veteran addition in what has been a really really wild off season for the bucks so far this year it's it's been crazy man so uh really happy to get logan ryan in that mix yeah i'm rooting for logan ryan that was cutting logan ryan was the one thing that really bothered me from the new uh front office really the only thing that bothered me even if there's something i didn't disagree with that didn't bother me like that because they didn't save any money and there was a talking point that like well he was too much of a joe judge guy it's like well if the new coaching staff can't handle someone like that, like someone who's the issue is he's too much of a leader. Like, so uh, I think he's going to fit with the bucks pretty well. You know, he's not, he's not some great player anymore, but he, he got a little underrated by giants fans. Uh, but he, he's a yeah, solid I will safety. Yeah, absolutely. I will say this too. I was hearing you talk about this, you know, talking about the new coaching staff, the new organization, uh, specifically like Brian Dable and Daniel Jones, right? I think that that is going to be an incredible partnership, right? You saw what Dable was able to do with Josh Allen and Buffalo. I think we could see similar success with Daniel Jones, right? The dude was a top tier first round draft pick for a reason. He's got that raw talent. And I really did like that hire of Brian Dable to the, uh, to the Giants there. I think that that's a really underrated hire for that head coaching move. I definitely like the hire. The issue is... Daniel Jones doesn't have, and I, I was a big fan of the Daniel Jones draft pick at the time. Obviously, things have changed since. He doesn't have the raw ability of Allen, and the issue is just year four. So it's not even like, can he, if this was year two, it, it would be a lot more optimistic coming off of that rookie year for Daniel Jones. But it's just, we've seen a, a good amount, and Jason Garrett was surely a problem. And you guys saw it. You guys got him fired um, after that Monday night football game. I was actually at, I, mean, I live in Florida. I was at that game. Um, it was technically the only Giants game I've been to that's been a loss, but I still claim I'm undefeated because Jason Garrett was fired the next day. Um, that is true. <laughs> but it's just, it's, he's got to be really, really good for you to, you know, bring him back now that the contract's expiring. So I, I hope I hope that's what happens. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how well he does after two years of, you know, not not like a horrible QB play, but not definitely not good enough. Yeah, one thing it reminds me a lot, too, just from like a Bucks fan perspective, was the whole Jameis Winston saga before Tom Brady came to town, right? Where it was just like a, will he be good? Will he not be good? What's going on with our quarterback situation? You know, that is what it kind of reminds me of in terms of like the, uh, I guess, stress level, I guess, or just like all the thought that has to go behind, you know, your guy at the quarterback position. You know, that's kind of what it reminds yeah. me of. So I sympathize with you, man. You know, we, we're kidding. Yeah, and I think that's way. where Daniel Jones is kind of destined to be for the rest of his career is kind of that Jameis Winston thing where it's like, hey, there's some really good Jameis Winston, but he's probably not going to be the most consistently good. But I, ho I hope so. And, and, you know, he's here this year, so I'm rooting for him. He's looked decent in camp so far. So, um, but James, I'll let you take it away. I appreciate it, man. And uh, it should hear how the Bucks are doing. I will, last yeah. thing I'm going to say is, I'm not rooting for Kyle Rudolph to do well. I'm not a Kyle Rudolph fan. But besides that, go box. Well, hey, thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it. Best of luck to the Giants this season as well. I'm uh, hoping they do some good and show a lot of improvement as well. Appreciate you, man. Of course. Thank you. So, um, 
You know, guys, hi, my name is James Hill. I run the YouTube channel, Mr. Bucks Nation, and welcome to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers portion of this live stream. We're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about in this portion of the live stream because, man, oh, man, this has been such a crazy offseason for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, so much has happened. But before we do get into you know, I wouldn't say all the moves because we'd be here a really, really long time. Let's get into a couple of more interesting notes or news, I guess I should say, that have occurred the past couple of days. And I do want to bring this up on Bleach Report's main website here. It is an article that we uh, that was uh, posted recently. Ryan Jensen was carted off the field at training camp practice today. I was there. It is not a great situation, folks. Ryan Jensen, during a play in practice, fell to the ground. He was rolled up on by a defensive lineman during a play. He was clutching at his knee. He had to be carted off the field, could not get up under his own weight. Ryan Jensen right now has been diagnosed with a knee injury. The severity of said knee injury is currently unknown. Todd Bowles, Jason Light, they had said after practice that they will get more information on that knee injury some point down the line. But if Ryan Jensen is to miss any type of time, be it in practice or, again, hopefully not, you know, games or anything along those lines, but whatever may happen regarding Jensen missing any type of time, the main guy that you're going to look to, and I'm going to go to this tab right here, is Robert Hainsey, the former third-round draft pick from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft class last year in the same draft class as Kyle Trask. He was originally slated to be competing for starting left guard snaps with veteran Aaron Sinney and, you know, recent second round draft pick in this most recent NFL draft, Luke Gedeke, which we will talk about him in a little bit. But now it seems like with the injury to Jensen that Hainsey may be more focused on the center position moving forward, which I think would be the correct move to make in this situation, given you need to have somebody who has some experience playing that center role. Right now, Hainsey is the top guy for that slot. He practiced and played in that center position the entirety of last season. He knows what he is doing, and he is the best guy i would think right now to take that spot that ryan jensen may leave if he does miss any time again fingers crossed that he does not miss any time because that would not be a great thing to see i'm wishing nothing but the best and a speedy recovery for ryan jensen but i want to go back to the bleach report page here as you see here ryan jensen carted off the field if we scroll down a little bit a little bit more of some positive news right tom brady to julio jones this could be scary if you guys did not know which i think a lot of people know at this point the tampa bay buccaneers signed julio jones to a one-year deal worth six million dollars a little bit more than i personally thought julio jones was going to get given the dead money cap situations that he is getting from the atlanta falcons and the tennessee titans i believe it totals around 19 million dollars so julio jones is getting even more money in this deal from the tampa bay buccaneers and i've heard a lot of different opinions about jones so far and just taking a quick look at the chat unspoken riz says julio jones comeback player of the year lock it in Vinny t also says bucks literally have the best wide receiver core in the league and we will talk about that wide receiver core here in a couple of moments but i do want to take a look specifically more at julio jones stats first right Let's go ahead and go to Pro Football Reference. You see Julio Jones, six foot three, two hundred and twenty pounds, seven time Pro Bowler, two time All Pro, the Hall of Fame All Two Thousand Tens team. But I want to specifically look at these last two years, twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. The twenty twenty season that he spent with the Atlanta Falcons only played and started in nine games, still did finish with seven hundred and seventy one receiving yards and three receiving touchdowns in that season, but only played a little over half the season. You then go to last year with the Tennessee Titans. Again, only started and played in 10 games that year, a little over half the season, finished with only 434 receiving yards and only one receiving touchdown. This has led a lot of people to say that Julio Jones is washed or he can't be the same receiver he once was, as you guys can see in the stats here. In 2015, 1,871 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns. In 2018, just a few years ago, 1,677 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns. A lot of people feel that Julio Jones cannot get back to a portion of what he was when he was that dude. But 
I'll disagree. I think in the case of the 2020 season, yes, he did get hurt, but he was still able to put up productive numbers minus, you know, not as many touchdowns as he does usually get, but still put up some good productive yardage regardless. And then in the case of the 2021 season, again, he got hurt once more and the Tennessee Titans offense is more of a run first offense that has always been a thing ever since they've had Derrick Henry a part of that team which could have led to not as many targets not as many receptions and not as many yards for Julio Jones I think given the current situation you look at that receiver core that we talked about in the chat you have Mike Evans you have Chris Godwin you have Russell Gage and now you have Julio Jones as your top four wide receivers in an offense with Tom Brady as your quarterback Byron Lethwich as your offensive coordinator who loves to have the football passed around. We'll take a look at some of Tom Brady's stats later on in this stream, but the Buccaneers love to pass the ball. They have so, so much talent at that wide receiver room that Julio Jones is going to be able to be in a healthier rotation. He will, I think, be able to maintain his health better this upcoming season than he has the past couple of years where he was relied on as that number one or even number two receiver in the offense. In this situation, he's going to be rotating with Mike Evans, with Chris Godwin, with Russell Gage. He's going to be the third, fourth wide receiver in whatever situation the Buccaneers may put him in. I feel that that is going to lead to better health for Julio Jones moving forward and over all more efficient and productive play as well which we will talk about again a little bit more going into my season preview later on in this stream let's go back to the chat let's talk about a couple of questions here great dane says what should the bucks do after the jensen injury we did just talk about that a moment ago and right now as i said the immediate answer is going to be Robert Hainsey. He is probably going to be the guy who is going to be slated as the center if Ryan Jensen has to miss any time. Again, fingers crossed that everything is going to be okay in a speedy recovery for him, but Robert Hainsey should be the other guy. Another guy you shouldn't really forget about is going to be John Mulshawn who is somebody that could also get some playing time at center as well. Uh, go ahead and take a look at him here. He does have some experience playing center. He has been doing it in kind of an emergency capacity when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have needed him to, but he came into the league as an undrafted free agent as a guard. He could be another guy who could get some reps at the center position moving forward, again, in the absence of an injury to Ryan Jensen. Haymaker says, thoughts on the running back depth. Now, that is a very interesting situation to take a look at there, Haymakers. You look at the Buccaneers running back position. They signed Leonard Fournette onto a long-term deal. Three years, $21 million, an average of $7 million a year. That is not, you know, a little chunk of change. That is a good amount of money to give to your starting running back. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers felt that Leonard Fournette is that dude and they paid him like a good starting running back in this league now the tampa bay buccaneers did lose ronald jones in free agency to the kansas city chiefs and that was unfortunate ronald jones was a good backup running back for the tampa bay buccaneers but in his place you brought back giovanni bernard on a one-year deal you have Keyshawn vaughn who the tampa bay buccaneers drafted in the third round just a couple of seasons ago and you have recent third round draft pick Rashad White in this most recent NFL draft. Six feet tall, 214 pounds out of Arizona State. He is going to be, I feel, the main running back who will be competing, or I guess they should say possibly getting those number two running back snaps for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers moving forward. And then also you have Kenyon Barner, who could make some noise, could be a good practice squad addition as possibly a emergency type running back. If you need to elevate somebody on game day, he can do some pretty productive things as well as a return man. So you definitely should not mark him out. But yeah, I definitely appreciate the question on the running backs, the you know running back depth and all those different types of things. It should be an interesting uh, you know situation to pay attention to. I know some people were concerned about Leonard Fournette's weight issues, things along those lines, folks. I've been at the first two days of training camp. Fournette looks fine. He's running well, and he is running with a lot of determination and a lot of ability. Looking back at the chat again, KPAD says, does Brady retire if the Bucs win the Super Bowl? I would say yes. I think that is a safe indication to make. I also do see uh, Rockets suck say, will this be Tom Brady's last season? 
Well, it all depends on what happens, I think. I think at the end of the day right now, nobody truly knows, probably not even Tom Brady himself. I know that there has been a general discussion or I guess a general sense here that this is probably going to be Tom Brady's last year and I totally understand where those conversations are coming from but at the end of the day this is a type of situation that we just have to take one day at a time folks I'm pretty sure that's what Tom Brady's doing so that's kind of what everybody else has to do with that situation as well but speaking of Tom Brady right that's how this whole crazy offseason for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers started right Tom Brady retiring then Tom came back and then it was just a flood of so many different things that happened folks I have such a long list of moves that were made Ali Marpet retired they are without their star left guard the best offensive lineman on their team at the time now they've done a couple of things to work on replacing Ali Marpet. You have Aaron Stinney, who was re-signed to the team. You have Luke Gedeke, who was drafted in the second round, or I guess, yeah, in the second round of this most recent NFL draft. And then you also had Robert Hainsey, who was going to be competing for left guards uh, opportunities. Now it just seems like it's going to be Aaron Stinney and Luke Gedeke competing for that due to the retirement of Ali Marpet, which was another shock retirement, again, after the shock retirement, and then shock return 40 days later, from Tom Brady. Chris Godwin re-signed, Carlton Davis re-signed, Ryan Jensen re-signed. Again, fingers crossed everything's going well with him. The Buccaneers lost Alex Kappa to the Cincinnati Bengals. They were without their starting right guard and their starting left guard pretty much in the starting portions of the offseason. Not a great look for the offensive line. People were concerned. However, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did make some moves in free agency. They signed Russell Gage, who I talked about earlier, to a three-year, $30 million deal, making $10 million a season. It was a good chunk of change for Russell Gage, who all in all has been able to put up some really, really productive stats in recent years uh, for the Atlanta Falcons, which could have also possibly led to some type of recruitment there to Julio Jones coming to the Buccaneers as well. But you look at Gage's last two years, 786 receiving yards, four touchdowns in 2020, 770 receiving yards, four touchdowns in 2021. Gage should be a very big and interesting piece moving forward in this Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing attack. But to replace Alex Kappa at that starting right guard position, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traded for Patriots starting right guard Shaq Mason for only a fifth round draft pick, which a lot of people were heavily, heavily confused about with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or with the New England Patriots making that type of move for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Why in the world would you trade an all pro like Shaq Mason to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for just a fifth round pick? I don't know, but it just added to the absurdity of what this offseason has been for the Bucs up to that point but they weren't done in adding you know certain pieces they added guys like uh you know logan ryan and some other pieces as well in that secondary to continue to boost the secondary and all those other different types of things you added guys like uh keanu neal you drafted logan hall you drafted luke getticky you signed akeem hicks just a couple of weeks ago you also signed kyle rudolph and now julio jones which we talked about earlier in this stream and then also by the way the head coach retired and was replaced by his defensive coordinator as if this offseason could not get any crazier we've had re-signings that were huge new signings that were huge retirements that were huge returns that were huge by the way rob gronkowski retired as well just so many different types of things going on folks it has been such a crazy crazy thing to pay attention to Real quick, just reading to the chat once more. Uh, Dylan Prod says Keyshawn Vaughn is highly underrated. He will have a chance to compete for those second running back snap opportunities. So let's pay attention to him moving forward. I agree with that. Uh, some questions. We Major says, I assume you have the Bucks winning the Super Bowl, right? I would too. I think they've certainly got a great chance to win the Super Bowl, uh, Major. I think that they are in an NFC that isn't as competitive as it was last year, and they have a chance to make a deep playoff run and potentially make a run to the Super Bowl. Uh, Aaron Gamond says, how big were the additions of Logan Ryan and Akeem Hicks? I feel the defense is underrated. Man, I got to agree with you there. Logan Ryan, I've talked about it whenever I was talking to Bobby earlier from the Giants. 
a captain, a leader, a versatile defender who can do so, so many good things for a defense and lead this group of young guys, that I think is going to be huge. Similar thing with Akeem Hicks. I saw him at practice today. The dude is an absolute wall next to Vita Vea. Pay attention to that combination moving forward because that is going to be huge, full pun intended. Also, Low Life says here, is this the year the Bucks sweep the Saints? Man, it's been tough the past couple of years playing the Saints, right? We have one playoff win against the Saints, but after that, the Bucks cannot buy a win against the Saints in the regular season. I'm not going to promise anything, but we'll just have to wait and see. And then Polish Hammer says, who should start at tight end? for the Bucks. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because we take a look at their roster here, specifically at the tight end position. After the retirement of Rob Gronkowski, like I talked about earlier, you have a lot of different options. You have Cameron Bray, who has been a mainstay on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for seven years now, 31 years old. He went to Harvard, folks, and he's been a serviceable tight end. Not the blocker that Rob Gronkowski was for this team, but overall a solid and efficient tight end who I feel could get the job done. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did just sign Kyle Rudolph to a contract just a couple of days ago, which I did talk about a little bit earlier in this stream. Six foot six, 258 pounds, 32 years old. He has been a starter in this league for multiple seasons, not just with the Minnesota Vikings, but played a little bit with the New York Giants as well. He should be a dominant threat in the red zone. And so far, two days through camp, has been treated like the starting tight end for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team so far up to this point. We'll see if anything changes moving forward. You also have rookie Cade Otten, who was taken in the fourth round of this most recent NFL draft at it from Washington, six foot five, 247 pounds. He could also figure to get some playing time moving forward. I appreciate that question there, Polish Hammer. But Coming away from the chat just for a moment, I want to transition and start talking about some bold predictions that I'm sure you guys have been, you know, thinking about on your own time, right? And when I take a look at some thoughts that I've been having that may be bold, but could very well happen moving forward, I take firstly a look at the offense. And I want to go to the 2021 stats for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I have a couple of good reasons as to why. First, let's take a look at Tom Brady's stats, right? 5,316 passing yards, 43 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. The first bold prediction I want to go ahead and give here is with the 17-game season, I predict that Tom Brady is going to throw 50-plus touchdowns this season. I think you take a look at everything that Tom Brady has going for him right now with all of his receiving guys. Yes, he lost Rob Gronkowski, and that was not a good thing for this Buccaneers offense, but you added Julio Jones, right? You have Russell Gage there. You have so much talent. You have Kyle Rudolph as a good red zone piece along with Cam Brate as well. I think it is entirely possible for Tom Brady to throw 50 touchdowns this upcoming season, especially with that extra game, especially with how much the Tampa Bay Buccaneers passed the ball with Byron Leftwich at the helm as offensive coordinator. I think that that is definitely a strong possibility for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and for Tom Brady. And at the age of 45, come on, if the man doesn't win the MVP award at that point, then what are we doing? But I do want to talk about my second prediction, which, again, does fall in line with the Buccaneers passing attack and the wide receiver room, and that is this. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have three, count them, three 1,000-yard receivers this upcoming season and a 1,000-yard rusher this upcoming season. I'm going to go ahead and take you guys down to the rushing and receiving stats for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from this previous season. You have Leonard Fournette, who had 180 attempts, 812 rushing yards, and eight rushing touchdowns. You have Ronald Jones in there as well with 101 carries for 428 yards and four rushing touchdowns. I feel, given the contract that Leonard Fournette has right now, the $7 million per year on a three-year deal, that is a bell cow back type of contract. That is the type of contract that you probably want to give him 50 more carries than what he possibly got the previous year. And I feel with 50 more carries, possibly even a little bit more, we could see Leonard Fournette reach a 1,000 yards rushing 
this upcoming season, which would be absolutely huge for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. And you take a look at the receiving room. The Buccaneers already had two 1,000 yard receivers last year and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Now, Chris Godwin may potentially miss a couple of games due to the ACL injury that he is still recovering from. Mike Evans, that dude is always good for a thousand yards. He has never had a season where he did not get 1000 yards in his career. That still blows my mind every time I think about it. But I think that those two are good to get a thousand yards once again this year, despite Chris Godwin recovering from his injury. I still feel he'll be able to hit that benchmark. But the question comes in, Who's going to be that third guy that gets a thousand receiving yards? Is it going to be Russell Gage? Is it going to be Julio Jones? I don't know. I think it's going to be a little bit of a toss up. We could see either one get that benchmark and it wouldn't necessarily surprise me. I think if I had to guess a guy right now, I'd probably guess Julio Jones over Russell Gage because Tom Brady might just favor him more in this offense because, you know, he's a high tier guy who has had a great history and Tom Brady loves getting guys like that on his football team. So Maybe we do see a situation where Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, and Julio Jones do end up getting 1,000 receiving yards each this upcoming season, and also Leonard Fournette getting 1,000 rushing yards. And then finally, folks, my final prediction that I have is this, Carlton Davis. Can we talk about Carlton Davis for a moment? The star cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's still my hashtag number one corner, folks, and I feel that he is underrated in the general sense of the league. And the reason I feel that that is the case is because the man doesn't necessarily get a ton of interceptions. We take a look at his past deflection numbers here, 11 past deflections in this recent season for the team, but only one interception. If we take a look at his stats overall throughout his career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it is more of the same. 19 pass deflections, only one interception in 2019. 18 passes defended in 2020, but only four interceptions playing in 14 games. By the way, Carlton Davis does need to stay a little bit healthier, but I will say this is my final prediction. Carlton Davis, if this man can stay healthy and he finally learns to catch the football and get these interceptions, I believe that Carlton Davis will lead the league in interceptions. I feel he's got that ability in him. He is fantastic in coverage year in and year out. Ever since his second year in the league, he has been able to showcase his coverage skills. And I think that that will finally all gel together with that new contract he got in this off season. And he will be able to compile a year that will have him leading the league in interceptions this season. That is just my thoughts on that folks. I know that one's crazy, but you know what? I have that much faith in Carlton Davis. Let's go back to the chat now with a couple more questions. If anything, what is one question mark besides center that you have regarding the team? Well, you know, Jay Smooth, you know, center right now is hopefully not a question mark, depending on what the heck happens. But I will say the tight end room is more of a question mark to me right now. Not necessarily, you know, the room as a whole, but Who's going to be that starter? You have so many guys competing. Like I said, you have Cam Brate, you have Kyle Rudolph, who I think has been a very good addition to the team so far. And you have Kate Otten as the three main guys who are competing. After that, what's going on with the safety position? You have Keanu Neal and Logan Ryan, who signed in free agency. They were very solid additions who have been able to do some really, really good stuff. They could both be starters, but you also have Antoine Winfield Jr. and Mike Edwards, who have also been really capable players for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in years past. Heck, Antoine Winfield Jr. today had a diving interception from Tom Brady during the training camp practice today. So, I mean, that's going to be a heavy competition. That's kind of another question that I have there is what is going on with that safety position? What is going on with that tight end position? Not necessarily questioning the guys who are there, but questioning who is going to rise above the others and end up being starters for those position groups. Another question here from Skip to my scoop. White will take the load off of Brady and playoff Lenny in the offense. Not too many people are talking about this. Yeah, talking about Rashad White, this dude I think has a great amount of potential for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back room. I really do believe that he is going to be a very solid running back. Now, I do understand. I said a moment ago that Leonard Fournette does deserve more opportunities and more carries given the big contract that they are giving him. And I still believe 
concede that. But I'm a very big fan of Rashad White. I feel that he can have a productive rookie season and a very efficient one, picking and choosing some of his spots and making the most of his opportunities. Another chat here from Tanner Hardwick that says, Carlton Davis is criminally slept on. I got to agree with you there, man. Again, Carlton Davis, he's my hashtag number one corner. Uh, I really do feel Carlton Davis is one of the top half cornerbacks in the league. In fact, one of the top cornerbacks in the league, period. The man is so, so good in coverage. We've seen it year in and year out against some of the best wide receivers in the league. And I feel that that trend will continue moving forward into this upcoming season where he's able to put more of this together and finally capitalize and get some more interceptions uh, where he has lacked in years past. But again, folks, you know, the Buccaneers have made so many different types of moves. And a couple of guys that they drafted in this most recent NFL draft, Logan Hall and Luke Gedeke, those are some other guys that you need to pay attention to. Logan Hall in a rotation with guys like Akeem Hicks, Will Golston and some of the other guys that they've got there, Rakeem Nunez, Rochez as well. He is going to be a guy that I feel is going to be adding some juice to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pass rush along that defensive line with some of these other guys like young linebacker Joe Tryon Showinka paired up with Shaq Barrett. You definitely can't sleep on Logan Hall. And then also Luke Gedeke. This dude's an absolute madman. I saw him at the combine. I, uh, you know, have seen him at training camp. I've seen him in interviews. The dude is a mad lad and he is going to bulldoze over some defensive linemen when he does get the chance and not be very apologetic about it, which you love that type of mentality from an offensive lineman. He is going to be a guy who's going to be competing against Aaron Stinney for starting left guard snaps. We'll see who ends up winning that battle. And also that's another question that we have is what's going on at that left guard position. Who's going to be the starter. Is it going to be Luke Gedeke? Is it going to be Aaron Stinney? Will Robert Hainsey be able to get back into the mix? Who knows, but we're going to have to be paying attention to it moving forward question from the chat here from brady kerr joe tryon showinka stats prediction you know i've talked about this in a couple of previous streams and we're going to go to uh we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of joe tryon showinka's stats in his rookie season you can see here started six games and uh, he played in all 17 games but taking a look at him he was the tampa bay buccaneers first round draft pick in last year's nfl draft with the 32nd uh, overall pick six games started 17 games played three passes defended four sacks 29 tackles 21 solo tackles eight assisted tackles five tackles for loss and 10 quarterback hits i think when you look at joe tryon double these numbers folks i think that eight sacks is a reasonable thing to give for Joe Tryon moving forward. Uh, 20 quarterback hits all in all, just kind of put a double on these stats as a full-time starter. And I think that that is going to be a good number to give Joe Tryon showing a JTS in this upcoming year. And all in all, that'd be a great thing. Pairing him with Shaq Barrett, all the other pass rushers that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have, I think that overall, it would be a very, very solid thing. For Joe Tryon showing up in year, year number two with his growth, with his overall potential and production to get around eight sacks, something along those lines. I very much appreciate that question. But folks, we're going to go ahead and end off this live stream. Thank you guys so much for not just listening into my portion of this live stream, but for everybody's portion of this live stream. It was an absolute blast. Thank you so much to Bleach Report for having us on for this live stream on the Bleacher Report app today. It was such an awesome time getting to talk to some of you guys about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and about some of these other teams off seasons, which was, you know, so, so much fun. Football is back, folks, and it feels oh so good. But folks, again, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, folks, we will see you all in the next video or the next live stream here on Bleacher Report. But until then, and as always, folks, goodbye for now. I always say go Bucks, but, uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys soon.